So we're back with these things. Um, these are my filament displays, segment displays. Um, we made one of these on a stream a little while back and I haven't done a thing with them since. So we're getting something. So we've got five, six, the bottom one isn't displaying, but that's about to change. Thought I might make a clock. Seems like the thing to do, right, with these displays, but it could also be a counter. But the reason I'm doing it is because I picked up this nice little bit of wood and it used to have feet on it, but they, they were rubber feet and they've gone all sticky. So I thought I can mount them on here. And I'm gonna need to 3D print some sort of brackets and maybe they can be sort of held at an angle like that, which would be nice. But the problem is I can only fit one, two, we'll get them all the right way around. Three and I would struggle to get another one on there. And ideally, I wanted to have six digits so that I could have the hours, minutes, and seconds. Now I could potentially do it if I have one sort of sticking right on the end, but I intended to put some of this sort of semi-translucent, no, that's semi-transparent, that's probably right, um, plastic in front of it. I've got two sheets of this and actually this is only A5, so it's the length of the, the, the width of the board. So um, it is easier, less cutting involved, if I just have this embedded in the board like that so that those four digits are visible. So that is the plan. Um, I've already got one that's complete, so we don't need one of those. And I need a controller for this. So on the boards here, the, it doesn't have a microcontroller. This chip here is a TLC5940, which is a 16 channel PWM driver. Uh, it's a 12 bit PWM driver, so it can give zero to 4096 levels. Um, but it turns out I put the wrong resistor on there. It should have been 2.2, not whatever I put, 3.3. Regardless, it doesn't matter. We'll go back and change that. But um, for now, I want to look at how we're going to do the timing on the, the clock. Now, I think you probably remember, oh, I can bring it in. It's right next to me. Brilliant. Oh, uh, is it going to reach? It is. So this thingy, let's see if we can focus a little bit on him. That's probably good enough. Um, this thing is currently running at nine volts rather than the 12 volts it requires. So that means that uh, it's a bit dimmer than normal, but that's not a problem for me because it's generally in a dark room. This thing, you set the time and then leave it on and it keeps the time. However, I modded the thing and I stuck in a little ESP8266, which caught the time whenever you turned it on. So every time you turned it on, it would get the time and then it would do it once every 12 hours to update this because it's going to have drift inside here. Now, the same is going to happen here if I try and use uh, a microcontroller to keep the time. I could use an ESP8266 and have it get the time every, what, 10 minutes or so and update the clock. Um, but what I want it to do is keep its own time and then get the time when it loses confidence or when I lose confidence, which would be once a day. So I'm going to use an 80 mega 328p. So this is your standard Uno um, IC. Uh, and I'm going to use a DS1307, um, which one of these is on here. And there's also a memory chip. But we're not going to use this module. Now, these modules are absolutely fantastic if you just want to throw a quick project together. Um, and they're great to learn on, honestly. But I don't want to use one of these. I'm going to use one of these. So this is a DS1307 and it's in a little DIP8 package. So we're going to be using one of these, a crystal and a couple of resistors. And that's basically it. Maybe a capacitor. I might throw one of those in there, but that's what we're going to be doing. So to do this, we're going to need to draw out a little schematic. Uh, should probably get a clean piece of paper. So the DS1307, it's one of the simpler RTC chips. It's, um, what is it, a Dallas chip. I think they're made by Maxim now or something like that. So uh, it's a simple dip eight. I'm gonna try and draw it as accurately as possible, by which I mean it's gonna be all bowed out and terrible. So this is the DS1307. So this is an RTC. It's gonna keep the time for us. It's reasonably accurate. There are better chips out there. However, this is a dip eight and I've got one lying around. So 
that's why I'm using it. Plus it's always nice to try new things. So uh, up here on pin one, we need a crystal. Now with these uh, timing circuits, uh, how do you draw a crystal? I'm just gonna draw it as a big box. I don't know. On pin two, we've got the other side of the crystal. Now it's important to note, it doesn't need any loading capacitance on here. So this crystal is gonna be a 32, 7, 6, 8 kilohertz one, well, 32.768 kilohertz. That's your standard watch battery, watch crystal rather. Uh, down here, the battery, that's what I was going for, uh, is down here. Now you've got um, VBAT, so this is, that's uh, pin three, and that goes to the positive of the battery. Now the positive is the longer one, isn't it? So positive there, and then we have the negative, going to the bottom pin. And this is uh, pin four and it's ground. Now this has to be the common ground to our circuit as well. So remember that. Now, if we go a bit further around to pin five, this is SDA. So this is an I squared C um, interface. I used to say I2C because I'd never heard anyone say it before, but I squared C apparently is the way you're gonna say it. Um, so, and that's uh, SDA. And then the next one up six is SCL. Um, so it's serial data and serial clock. So the data comes in, it clocks it, and then, you know, that's kind of how it works. It's your standard data thing. Um, the next one is one that I've never ever used. So we might look at using it. Um, and this is uh, pin seven, and this is the interrupt pin slash the square wave pin. Now this can be, it's a programmable like output essentially. So you can have it uh, output a square wave at a certain level. So I'm not quite sure what it is, but I know you can have one hertz, so once a second, but you can also make it faster than that. I'm not quite sure what the reason is for that. Um, it might be for alarms and things, but I haven't looked into the data sheet, so I'm not gonna explore it just yet. We might look at it later on. Um, it might be important when we look at programming. If we don't wanna um, query this chip all the time, we might, might wanna use that one hertz output to increase our seconds count. And the very last one is VCC. Now this can run up to five volts and down to 3.3, I believe. So our battery voltage down here is actually important. That's about three volts. I'm gonna be using one of these little uh, lithium batteries to LIR2032, it's a rechargeable one. Um, I think this can go up to the VCC on the, the battery voltage. Um, so if you're charging it, you can charge it up to, to whatever that would be. So that is our circuit, almost. So with SDA and SCL, with our I squared C, we need to have pull-up resistors. Now, typically you'll see references to pull-up resistors being from what 4.7 uh, kilo ohms to 10 kilo ohms. And now uh, it's a bit weird because I always usually just follow what's on, a, on someone else's data sheet that I found online, someone else's data sheet or someone else's schematic. However, there are some calculations for figuring that out. I'm not gonna do them because I don't do the maths, but I can tell you why they, you might have different values. So on this, we're gonna put a value of 4.7 kilo ohms. I can't draw an ohm symbol to save my life. Um, and we're also gonna do the same on uh, this one here. Oh, that actually goes, no, ignore that, ignore that bit. <laughs> I'm just going to come up here. We'll do that here. And that's 4.7 kilo ohms. God, that's terrible. And then these go out to our microcontroller. Now, the reason you have these, uh, it depends whether you need a high or low bus, basically. So this is your data bus. Um, and if you need it to be high most of the time, and then when it's communicating, it drags it low. Uh, then you need some way of keeping it high. But if you've got a massive bus, so you've got loads of items on your bus or really long wires, a lot of capacitance in your system, then you need to have fairly low resistors, resistor values on your bus to make sure that it's, uh, it's pulled high fairly quickly or it's pulled low fairly quickly. So it discharges that capacitance or it charges up that capacitance. And it means that you can get faster data rates. So, uh, for example, this thing runs at one 
100 kilohertz, I think, but um, some of them are going to run at like 400 kilohertz. But these are perfectly fine values, and I think 10 kiloohms would be fine as well. If you're running a battery powered project, you probably might want to think about looking at 10 kiloohms, especially if you're on like a, a little, very super low power thing anyway. Now, remember, we're going for roughly that schematic, so we need to find pin one first. Um, I'm not going to do the programming today because I've sort of wasted a lot of time and it's already like eight o'clock at night. So I'm not going to be doing that. I've been watching people play Spider-Man on the PS4 online. So I've sort of wasted a lot of time today. I don't have a PS4 incidentally, um, but I do like watching people play computer games. I know it's reasonably sad, but it's better than TV. So uh, pin one, we need to go to our crystal, which I haven't got. I'll pick one up in a second. Um, pin three is the positive on the battery. So pin three goes to positive, which is this one up here. Okay, next up, uh, we've got pin five. That's That needs a resistor actually pulled up. So. I've got some 4.7K resistors here. So let's get one of these out. And we'll pop that over here into our power. Not that I've plugged any power in yet. And we'll do the same on the next one. So these aren't in line, these are pulling up. So they're uh, perpendicular, I guess, to your um, your actual line. So let's put wires on those so that we know they're going to go somewhere. So we'll pop one there and then we'll need another one. Let's use a different color. Uh, so we've got SDA is orange and SCL is white. Now we need to put uh, something on VCC. For now we're not going to be using the square wave output but we'll leave it all the same. And then we need ground, which is just over here. We'll pop that over there. Now, we do need to add the battery ground as well. So we'll do that. I don't have appropriate colored wires here. So that is essentially our circuit. Now this is all we need to be able to get the time. Now when this starts up, when we first read it, this chip has never been used as far as I know. Um, it's gonna start up with the, what is it? The, it's like the Linux epoch time, I think it's called. Um, and that's something like the 1st of January, 1970 or something like that. So that's the date it will kick out and the time will be 0000. So this is, um, this is gonna, what we're gonna be rocking. Um, and we're also gonna be using our AT Mega 328P. Um, and what I did was sprayed one of these uh, cheap Chinese boards orange. That's sort of uh, Dave Darko's influence. I was, I, you remember I sprayed, um, oh actually I don't know if I put it, I don't think I did a video, I did it on social media at least, but um, I was uh, spray painting that toy that I'd created. I spray painted the inside of the acrylic. Anyhow, it's all gonna go on here hopefully. So there should be enough room on here for me to wire it all around. And then on the back side, I can put all the little horrible bodge wires that no one will see. And then this can just get uh, sort of mounted onto the wooden frame. So, oops. So yeah, it can get mounted onto this wooden frame at the back here with these hopefully angled up. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna achieve all of this yet. It's all in a bit, of a, a bit of a mess, but I have picked up some cables that I should be able to just plug into the back of these, if you can see, plug into the back, and then they have um, female on the end. Don't know how this is gonna work out, so it should route around to the next one, but look how long they are. So it's gonna be quite a big, chunky thing. I say this all the time, that I don't really know how something's gonna turn out, but I genuinely don't this time. So it might look ugly, but then is that okay? <laughs> it probably is fine. I'm not usually one to worry about it, but yeah, that's what we're gonna go for. We're gonna go for essentially an Uno, uh, an Arduino Uno with a DS1307, because I don't want to use a pre-built chip, <laughs> a pre-built module. Bit lazy, isn't it? I'm going to go and refine that crystal before we finish because I'll show you where it goes. Whew. Well, I had to dig into the old um, 
the old box of what was the thing I made the binary clock it's a bit late tonight I'm kind of tired let's see if we've got some lying around in here somewhere there we go I've got a ton of these so these are 32.768 kilohertz crystals so They're a little bit wee to be going in a breadboard, but they've got fairly thick wires on these ones, so they should be fine. So that just pops in just there. Now, it generally ideal it's, uh, is if you sort of glue it to your board or have a, a wire wrap around just to hold it still so it doesn't shake its way loose. So it just pops just there. So that's essentially our completed circuit. Okay, see you guys next time when we'll continue this somehow.